we go. No! On this episode of It's Me or the Dog. Indiana, that's a no! Victoria meets a dangerously hyperactive dog. So he doesn't listen. He just gets even crazy. Exactly. No! An overwhelmed mother of two. Jumping, mouthing, no. He does not no. stop. Enough! No! And a child on the brink of disaster. Carlos. Stop playing that now. I find Indy dragging Shane around the living room floor. <gasps> One day, bang, he's gonna make contact and somebody's gonna be in hospital. It's oh. insane. Victoria must give this family a wake-up call. Stay. Stand up. If you don't get on the same page, this will be an absolute disaster. Or they must lose a member of their beloved household. It's not going to work here. I'm Karen. I live in Staten Island with my husband, Joe, our two sons, Joseph and Shane, and our crazy yellow lab, Indiana. It's absolutely chaotic, is how I describe our household. <laughs> Indy, get down! I'd say in the five months that we have Indiana, he has turned our lives upside down. Uh, I'm sick to my stomach. Boy. Oh, ah, get away from me! Oh, God. The biggest problem that I have with Indiana, it's the biting and the attacking. No! Look at what Indy did to me today. Made me bleed. We've dubbed Indiana's vicious mode. No! Hey! Cujo mode. Whoa, whoa, you okay? I've been bitten at least 100 times by Indiana, and that's not an exaggeration. Every single one of us in this household has been bitten by Indiana. He's bitten Joe's leg, my arms, and my back. He punctured Joseph's ear. He lacerated the top of Shane's eyelid. It's scary stuff. Oh, easy, Shane, Shane! Shane is a high-energy child, and we have a dog that's a high-energy dog. The combination is like lethal, like they're just gonna combust. No flailing your arms in his face. Stop, no! Indy is pretty much the last thing I wanna deal with after I've been, you know, at, a, at my job all day. How was my boy today? Not too good. Oh, we always say that. Well, I got bit today. I'm exhausted, as usual, got nothing done. How about I leave you for a day with him? Look, look, look. And here we go. Okay. okay, so maybe you want to come down and let the dog out of the crate. Uh, after I decompress for a little yeah. while. You're going to decompress, all right. You're going to decompress right out of here. I should be able to get a little relief at the end of a busy day. Oh, Indiana! Yeah, there we go. All right, Kay, you can grab that one. I'll get the next one. Am I foolish enough to think you would get up? Joe's good at dictating, but not at executing. You know what? I'd like to sit and eat, too. Do you not see the same yeah, thing I, I do? Yeah, I pushing him down. Why do you have to put him in the crate? The situation that we're in right now cannot continue. I actually feel hopeless at this point. Indiana, that's a no-no. With Indiana running rings around Joe and Karen, Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell is their last hope. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. I'm Karen. Nice to meet you, it's Victoria. Nice to meet you, welcome. Oh, and this? This is Indiana. Oh, Indiana. We are very happy you're here. Hello. Hi, I'm Joe. You're Joe. Hey, nice to nice meet to you, Joe. Okay. Nice to meet you. And this Indy is Easy Does It. So, no, off. So, how old is he? Indy is seven months. Seven months. Yeah, he's a tough cookie. He just had a little bit of an episode right before you came. What do you mean? And he, he just sort of started attacking me. I got bite on the belly, bite on the arm. That one there. This one? Yeah. I'd like you off the couch, even though <laughs> you can see that we no longer have right. couches. This is, all, this is all This is all. his handiwork. To, to Indiana, right All here. of this? All, all of this. All of this destruction? Of yes. <gasps> it's a horror. There is so much damage in this house. The sofas, they're destroyed. Oh, no! Okay. No! This is another issue, and okay, now he's okay. starting to lift his leg. That was, that was marking. Yes. Is he neutered? No, no but we have an appointment to have him neutered. So you are getting him neutered, Absolutely. but just not yes. yet. All right. Yeah. It's slightly embarrassing to have Victoria see Indy's bad behavior. No, no. I said no. Indy is jumping. No. No! Snapping his teeth together, no. chewing on furniture. Indy! Indy! Lifting his leg and peeing on everything. Indiana, that's a no! I've only been in the house no. for a couple of minutes. It's insane. 
If you wanted to get him in the crate now, if you wanted to give him calm time, how would you do it? Throw him in well, the I would crate. try to grab his collar, at which point he'll start to bite me. Already what I'm seeing here, I don't like. He's bitten the children. Um, sorry, I know it's a lot to take in. No, but what he just did to you, what he just but... did to you, he does to them too. Yes. Cool them down. Do Come down to meet Victoria. Hi. Victoria, this is Shane. Hello, Shane. Shane. Say hi to Victoria. Hi. And this is Joseph. Hi. Joseph, say hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, Joseph. Hi. Good to meet you, too. How many times has he bitten you, then? I have to say, like, six times, seven times. Six or seven times? Yeah. Shane. So I see the energy level here? And, and okay. it's constant. I get so, it. Yeah. We say Indy is a canine version of Shane. These two are feeding off of each other. Stop, stop, stop playing that now. It's just getting a little riled up. Tell me about the history. Where did you get him? Well, that, that's, that's a funny story, because I was remiss for Mother's Day, and I actually didn't buy her anything. So, we were in the mall, the local mall one day, and I went into the pet store because I didn't want to go exactly. into, the, into the shoe store with her. <laughs> and they're relentless in the pet store. We walked in, we saw him, and that's the end of the story. We bought him. <laughs> Kind so he's a puppy mill dog, really. Probably. Yeah. Oh, Indiana, okay. no! He's nuts. And the family, they have no control. Karen? Yes? I noticed that you're the one that's cleaning up. Yeah, Joe doesn't Princess. move fast enough for me. Every single time Indy peed, it was Karen who cleaned it up. Joe did nothing. He would probably ask me to do it anyway. It's just a power struggle on who gets to clean up the pee and the poop. That makes me feel frustrated and mad. Having witnessed how dangerous the situation is, Victoria knew the couple needed a wake-up call, Joe in particular. The stress levels in this house, they're exhausting. Exhausting. Have you ever had him look at you and go, bam, and yes, nail you? We have. That's happened a couple of times, and I was like, Oh, no right. way. That's crazy. I'm hoping that he'll grow out of it. Indiana gets angry, and that's when he bites. Karen and Joe have got to realize the severity of the situation, because Indiana's only going to keep growing, and he's going to become a big, powerful dog. What I see concerns me. You have a, a dog that is just on that brink of becoming extremely dangerous. Joe, I noticed in the first 15 minutes of being here, after he lifted his leg three times, that it's always Karen? Not always, but Not most always, of the time. Not always, but most of the time. That's right. I'll, I'll concede that, yes. I'm telling you, if you don't pitch in and help, and if you don't get on the same page, and if you're not consistent, this will be an absolute disaster, and that's one thing I can guarantee you. I was really glad when Victoria told Joe that he needs to step up more where Indy's concerned, because I've been telling him that for a long time. And I'm hoping that the fact that she said it to him will make a difference. You're going to have to do it. My job is a full day. There's a lot of stress. I'm under pressure to produce numbers. A certain part of me wants to come down and say, hey, you know, could I help you? But after I do my day at work, I'm pretty much exhausted. Victoria gave Joe something to think about while he was at work. Easy. But forged ahead with Karen on how to deal with Indy's biting and mouthing. Stand up. When he jumps up on you, you turn your back. Turn your back. Keep turning your back. Hey. He yes. really is trying to bite you. Yeah, he will, he will go at me. I, I no. Indy. No. Off. Indy's behavior worsens, so Victoria changes tactics. I have to stop that behavior right now. All right, now, take this and block his bites. Block. I gave Karen a clipboard that she could just hold in front of her to block his bites. Block the fight. There you go. Indy's jumping and biting at me as usual, trying to get the ball out of my hand. And I'm just, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing this going the way we need it to right now. Off. He just got even more excited. Oh, my gosh, he does not stop. So he doesn't listen. He just gets even crazier. Exactly. Victoria is witnessing just how hard it is to get Indiana to calm down. So he doesn't listen. He just gets even crazier. Exactly. That's All right, exactly get me right. the leash. Get me the leash. The clipboard wasn't working, so I had to change tactic really, really quickly. Don't chase him. Don't chase him. He's out of control. So you just stay there, 
Karen must stand her ground and not give Indiana any attention until he calms down. He's fine, ain't you? Go put the leash on him. Okay. Tell him good boy. I want him to see that if he wants something and he wants it badly, that he has got to offer you good behavior, that he can't bite at you anymore. Indiana, when he doesn't have anything to do, he turns on his person. So it's really important to keep that mind activated. And a series of toys, I think, will be really beneficial for him. But he can't have that toy until he comes up to you and calmly sits in front of you. Then he can have it. Walk up to him, ask him to sit. Sit. Now he gets the toy. Good, good boy. boy. Good boy, he gets it. Good boy. Very good, good boy. boy. He's got to start focusing on you. He's got to start listening to you. I want the family to be under no illusion about this process here. And he gets nothing, nothing unless he works for it. Yes, I'm giving you the tools. Yes, you've got to work hard. But there is a seed in my mind that says, this could potentially be very difficult. After dealing with Indiana's troubling behavior inside, Victoria wants to see how he behaves outside. So they go to a Staten Island beach. I want Karen to show me how Indiana behaves on a walk. I sort of know what's going to happen, but I want to see it for myself. Easy, Indy. <laughs> OK, buddy. Indiana is lunging at other dogs. He pulls like a freight train. So the walk, it's just a nightmare. Easy, Easy. Indy. Indy's acting as he usually does. And this is how we walk. Just how overwhelmed are you? Oh, I just feel like I want to collapse every day. Me too. And most of it has to do with Indy. Right. There are so many red flags that I'm already thinking this is not the right home for Indiana. If it's moving, he's going after yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> what do you need? He's unable to focus. He's unable to keep his attention on anything for any amount of time. That's his problem. Having seen the scope of Indiana's behavior, Victoria has a diagnosis she wants to share with the family. This is not just puppyhood. This is a dog that is unable to focus. It switches very fast from one thing to another, then it's on another, then it's on another. Barking, jumping, <laughs> mouthing, the tendency to get irritated very no, quickly, no. and the inability no. to be affected by confrontational discipline is a classic case, textbook case, of hyperactivity disorder. Really? Textbook. And I was blown away when Victoria said that Indy has ADHD. I can't fathom having to deal with this issue, especially on top of dealing with Shane being high-spirited and high-maintenance. He bites. What's the intention behind the bites? Most of the time, it's play. Then sometimes it turns nasty. It's the nasty ones that really concern me. One day when he really intends to hurt somebody, bang, he's going to make contact, and somebody's going to be in hospital. I'm sorry. I just got to be truthful with you. You might not have the environment that's right for this dog. I get upset because I knew from the word go, I knew it in my, I just knew it. And now we're faced with this. Victoria's assessment of Indiana having a screw loose, um, I feel maybe a little premature because I don't really want to think that, you know, he's a special needs dog. I want to put a lot of things into place to see if he can calm down. Do you think he can? I'm very 50 50. You've got a working breed here. If this dog doesn't have its outlet, its needs met. It's not going to work here. Victoria doesn't seem very optimistic right now, and uh, that's scaring me. It's always upsetting when somebody cries when they realize that their dog might not be able to stay in their home. I would much prefer if Indiana could stay in the home, but it's up to them and the amount of work that they're prepared to put into him. I'm hanging on to maybe a shred of hope that she can tell us that this is not a lost cause.
The next morning, the outlook for Indiana gets bleaker still. Joe went off to work, and I went to use the bathroom and heard Shane screaming. Real screams, mommy, mommy, please help me, help me, help me. So I ran out the bathroom to find Indy dragging Shane on his back around the living room floor by his ankle. <gasps> I was stunned. He was so upset, obviously. The dog's hurting him. He's got his mouth clamped on Shane's ankle. So I took him off of Shane, but he was, he was shaken. He was very upset, crying, can we get rid of this dog? So I was a bit upset. Yeah, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This morning is just a prime example of why I'm concerned about Indy in this house. Because the more Shane eggs Indy on, the more violent Indy gets. And situations like Shane being dragged around the room with his ankle are going to happen. Victoria wants to act fast to keep Shane safe from Indy. I want your listening ears on. Are they on? Do not turn them off. Now, tell me what happened this morning with Indy. Indy was biting my leg, and then my shoes came off, and then he started biting my sock. Oh, was he pulling you around the room? What happened just before he did that? Were you playing with him? But what I'm going to ask you to do is really, really hard. But you're six years old, and I think you can do it. When you're around Indy, you like running, don't you? OK? <laughs> but you know what? Have you ever tried just walking around Indiana? Just walk around the room. I'll try. Yeah, walk around and then walk around the room. OK? Look what Indiana's doing. Looking at me. He's just looking at you, isn't he? He's not trying to follow you. Now, I want you to do the same thing, and I want you to run around the room. Ah. There you go. Now. OK. All right, steady, now, steady. Now, stop. Did you see the difference from what Indy was doing from when you were just walking to when you were running? What was the difference? We were trying to do this. Yes. So what happens, what do you do if you don't want him to do that? What do you do? Ignore him. You walk slowly. Do you know the difference between red light, orange light, and green light? All kids know how to do the stoplight game. Red light, orange or yellow light, and green light. OK, so do this. Green light means go, 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 go. Good. Hopefully, when they want him to stop running, they can say yellow or orange. Orange light means walk slowly. Nice. And red light means... Stop! Now, this is what's going to happen with your family, all right? When you hear them say green light, you can run as fast as you can. When you hear them say orange light, you walk slowly. And when you hear them say red light, you... Stop! Got it. Good job. So that's really important around Indiana because we don't want him to bite you like he did, OK? You going to be able to do this for me? And I think it's really important that the only time you play with him is when your parents are around. I think the red light, orange light, green light that Victoria was introducing Shane to was a great idea. So I think I'll be able to use that with relation to his play with Indy. <laughs> I think Shane was very smitten with Victoria. I really think that uh, he made a, a friend for life there. Victoria is lovely. With Shane promising to curb his behavior, Victoria wants to see if Indiana is also capable of impulse control. What we're going to do, this is the leave it. Leave it is just a great technique in getting a dog to be able to control its impulses. I have to get him to want to focus and listen to his owners. And if that doesn't happen, Indiana will end up in a shelter, or worse, he's going to end up being put down. I'm going to tell him, all right, now you have to respect that when I say leave it, you've got to move away from something. There's some food in my hand. I'm going to show him it. And if he goes towards it, it goes away. Take advantage. 
Indiana has no impulse control whatsoever, so I think it's going to be really hard for him to inhibit his behavior. Indy just seems to be fixated on getting at the treat, and I'm afraid that he may not get this technique the way he needs to. Uh-oh. Good. His head turned away from it. That's what I want. Leave it. Good. Nice. So it's when he... Yeah, when he goes controls like ...controls himself. Then he gets it. Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right, I'm going to hold now. So you show him the treat, tell him to leave it, and then reward him if he does. OK. OK. Leave it. I don't want him snapping. Leave it. Victoria is working with Karen and her hyperactive dog, Indiana, to see if he can master some basic impulse control training. So you show him the treat, tell him to leave it, and then reward him if he does. OK. OK. Leave it. I don't want him snapping. Uh -uh. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Nice. Now, tell him good boy. Good boy. Yeah. This is hard for him. Yes, I see that. Oh, my gosh. He's, he's struggling. Like, oh, can't get <laughs> he knows what to do now, but he's got to get through that momentary, got to inhibit my behavior, and then I'll get something good. This is really important for a dog like this to have a bit of impulse control. Good. Good. Nice. With Indy showing progress in impulse control, Victoria wants to get husband Joe more involved in the training and with his family. So she lines up a surprise for Karen. You don't ever have even 30 minutes by yourself to read a book. True. So today, I'm going to take you for a little break, all right? Joe and the kids are going to be in charge. <laughs> and you are going to come with me to the beach. Karen deserves the breather. She hardly ever gets any time to herself. And I also want Joe to see what it's like to spend a morning with the kids and the dog, with Karen not around. That's your escape bag. <laughs> exactly. OK. See you All guys. Right. Go Love for you. it. Bye. Bye, Indy. Bye. And Indy, you are not Try coming. Try to keep it together, Joe, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See ya. Bye. Indy off. I get to live her life when she's down at the beach. To throw it all at me like that was a little bit overwhelming. It's going to be a little bit different for me to kind of step into that role. Good. Oh, how nice. Oh, my goodness. The beach is beautiful. The beach is calm. Everything's right with the world, sitting, watching the water and listening to the ocean. Because we're taking a break, I want you to have some of my favorite chocolate. Oh, yes. Kit Kat. What is life without chocolate? <laughs> not, not very much fun. Mm -hmm. Here, here. I wonder what Joe and the kids and the dog are doing right now. I'm so many worlds away from that. <laughs> Please let me enjoy the chocolate and the beach. <laughs> Shane? No! Please stop yelling. I can't leave them on the floor, you know why? Because what if Indy comes, what if Indy comes and does pee? Indy, you got a poo? Come outside. He's got that trot. Look what you and Indy did to the couch. Who cares? There's nothing better coming to the beach and hearing those waves. That's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. uh. Come on, we're going to eat. It's hot. I told you. Of course it's hot. All right, come here. She's on the beach, and I'm here sweeping the floor. That, that works for me. Joe, I want this room clean. Pick up the stuff on the floor. Sit down and do your homework. Well, I, you want me to clean up or do my homework? Joseph, I want you to do both. Come on. <coughs> Shane, you're making Daddy very tired. <coughs> it's like I'm on the top of the house in The Wizard of Oz at that scene when it's spiraling up out of control, looking down, saying, well, should I jump or not? You know, I have a lot of respect for you because your situation is not easy. And I think for any mom who has got to be a mother 
has to work, bring up children successfully. Now you've got a third child who's a really problem child. Yes. You need some new time. Yeah, I agree with you. Come on, Shay. No. Things just keep on getting worse for Joe. Let's go play with Indy for a little while. No! Oh, no! No! Stand up. No. Oh. I don't want to play! No. It's a nice day out. No. Nice day no. out. I'm going to check in with Joe and the kids, see how they're getting along. Enjoy. Thank you, darling. Everything's taken care of. Thank you for this gift, because that's what it is, a gift. Thanks, Have Victoria. Nice I think if we are able to train Indy and get him to a place where he's a more manageable dog, the effect of that will be that I will have some more spare time for myself. Hey. Good boy. Hi. Hey. Hey, Joseph. There's quite a calm scene when I return, but something tells me that it hasn't always been that way. How have things been going? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. Victoria decides to take advantage of Joe being home to do some training with him. No, uh, no, oh. no, 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 absolutely good. not. Do never let him jump at you and give him the treat, right. Joseph. You're standing there like a wet lettuce. <laughs> no. Here, come on. Andy, Andy, sit. Good. Good boy. They give it. That's it. That's it. Never allow him to jump good up at you boy. like that. That's just behavior that we're trying to stop him from right. doing. Should we sit down? Karen is now enjoying herself. She's sitting on the beach. It's beautiful down there. She's reading her book. She's taking a little bit of time for herself. Good. I cleaned the house for Karen. You cleaned the house? Yeah, I, uh, I swept up. Well, look, I took all the, I did the doors in the front because she was complaining all oh the fingerprints. The kids basically did their homework and, and, and cleaned up their rooms. You did? This experience really has changed me as a person because I have a newfound respect for the job my wife does with my family. You don't really see it firsthand until you actually walk a mile in her shoes, and I did that today, and I can tell you I'm very impressed. Coming up. <gasps> He's left his marks on me. Indiana is back to his old tricks. Put that in front of you. Put it in front of you. Victoria Stillwell is working with Joe and Karen and their rambunctious dog, Indiana. The family aren't the only people being terrorized by the dog. Neighbor and babysitter Maggie is one of Indiana's regular victims. Hi. Gee. Hey, how are you? Hey. He continues to bite at me, lunge at me, rip clothes, etc. So it's been quite a number of times that he has basically left his mark on me. <gasps> Those are all the bruises from yeah. him? Well, it's a block mechanism. You block him with your arm? but yet that's what he does. This is what it'll do. So he gets at your arm. Um... He has been getting away with this jumping behavior with both of you, and I want him to know that I'm always ready for him, and that I'm going to put this in his mouth if he jumps at me. And yeah, is this a little aversive? Yeah. But he has to know his boundaries with me. He has to know his boundaries with everybody, and that this jumping behavior is not going to get anywhere. The way you're blocking with your arm, that's a big chew toy. It is. And that's going to get you hurt and bruised up. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why, for now, you need to carry something like this leash with the chain with you at all times when you're with him, so that you can just hold it in front of you. Because he doesn't like biting this. This is your protection. If Maggie's going to spend any time with Indiana, she's got to get on the same page as everybody else. OK, so you just hold it by your side, okay. and you use it when you need to use it, OK? There you go. That in front of you. Put that in front of you. Put it in front of you. There you go. Tell him to sit. Sit. Good girl. Great. Nice. Okay. And the reason why I think it's vital you still maintain a relationship, at least be able to come a walk in, which is so good that you do that, is because having him in a crate for 10 to 12 hours while you're at work, I know it's every other week, is just going to make this dog stir flipping crazy. True. True. So that's why it would be really good if you could continue. Making Karen's life easier and keeping the children safe is a priority, but Victoria is concerned with the current method of crating Indiana. The crate has not been a happy place for Indiana. He spends a good eight hours in the crate. Eight hours for a hyperactive puppy like this is way too long. I want to give you this. Oh, wow. To put in your kitchen here. A baby gate means that Indiana can be sectioned in one room or another 
while she goes about her daily chores. And I think that's going to help Indiana stop peeing and pooping everywhere. You need to go to the bathroom, for goodness sake. And you want to make sure that your kids are safe. Then that's the time when you leave him in here with a toy, and we put the baby gate up, and the boys are in the other room. If he starts to jump over it, you raise it just a little higher, so I it see. makes it a yes. bit higher. But there are also really tall ones you can get. OK. It's all about the kids' safety. So I'm really thankful that she brought that here. There's another tool for you for Thanks. management purposes. Yeah, very much. We can use that. All right. Indy is showing progress. But to further curb his mouthing and biting, Victoria takes him for a test to see what kind of outlet would be best for him. So Karen and Joe, this is John and Andy. Hey, how are you? Andy, tell us what you do. We train dogs for detection work, whether it be narcotics, explosives, bed bugs, gas line detection. And we're going to just show you how a couple of these dogs work and how we might be able to interact your dog with some of the games the dogs can play. They'll learn more about their dog and about their dog's drives when they see Andy and John working with their dogs. That's Let me go exciting. run her. You ready? Good girl. You've hidden explosives. We've hidden explosives out here. Back. Check it. Good. Back here. Check it. Good. Check here. Good girl. Oh, my goodness. That is amazing. And that in here. That is amazing. That's insane. Wow. It was so fantastic. I was actually thinking, wow, this would be really cool, something cool for Indy to do. Because she's an explosive dog, she sits real slowly, makes no sudden moves, doesn't put her paws on anything. So let's see this dog. Yes. OK. Now Andy tests Indy to see what type of activity would best curb his aggression. Hey. This is Indy. What are you doing? I think Indy is probably going to do very well. I'm really looking forward to seeing him in action. <laughs> oh, yes. This is so <laughs> Yay! <laughs> what do you think, Andy, from first impressions? Well, he's got a lot of prey drive, right? The will to chase something that's moving. Now we're going to see if he has some hunt drive. OK, OK. To gauge Indiana's hunt drive potential, Andy will hide a toy and see if he can find it. Andy! Look at that. What are they doing? What are they doing? Andy! What are they doing? What are they doing? Andy! OK, tell him, find it. Go, go, go. Go, go. Come on, Andy, go. find it. We discovered that his attention span was not there, and his drive to be that hunter was not completely there. But I think in the prey drive department, he was number one. Andy demonstrates a game that would help curb Indy's negative behavior by providing him with an outlet. As we have some of these narc bags, we call them. You can put anything you want in here, and then play with the dog. It goes out there, he brings it back. When he brings it back, you have another one. The more funny he's having, and the more energy he's burning off, the less of a pain he's going to be, the more enjoyable he's going to have be to have around. There's a lot of energy and no real outlet. Right. The other thing we have, this is called a flirt pole. And what this is for is to back and forth so he can chase it, he can play with it, you can get it back from him, and bounce him back and forth. It's a matter of us being able to play games. Now, um, realistically, Joe, are you going to be able to give him that kind of outlet that he needs? to engage your sons in the play, to devote the time every day to this kind of stuff. Victoria Stillwell knows it will take a lot more time and energy to help Indiana and asks Joe if he can make that commitment. Now, realistically, are you going to be able to give him that kind of outlet that he needs to engage your sons in the play, to devote the time every day to this kind of stuff? I'm going to give it my all. I really am. Have him by your side. Victoria doesn't waste any time. I want you to get him to sit because you stand in front of him and say sit okay. with a hand signal. Okay. I don't want you to jerk him into a sit. Right. Indy, sit. Nice. Okay. Tell him to stay. 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 And then you say, ready? Ready. Go again. Nice. Nice. Good. Good. 
Joe seems to be really grateful for the training that I've done with them. He really sees that there could be potential that, you know, Indiana's going to stay. Ready? Ready? Go get it. Nice, good. One of the proudest things to me is the way Indiana took the training. He really just took the instruction and ran with it. Ready? Go get it. Nice, good, beautiful. Victoria wants to give the boys a chance since they've been patiently waiting in the back. Shane, ready to throw? I really want Shane in particular to learn how to play safely with Indy because their energy levels are pretty much the same. And I don't want to see him get hurt, yet I want him to be able to have fun with Indy. Say stay and then stay. Ready? Ready? Throw. Go get it. One. Yes, Shane. Right. Awesome. No, 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 no. You don't run after. <laughs> Shane. Still Shane. Joseph, you want to do the next one? I want to show you another game. Indiana! <laughs> Whee! <laughs> All right, Joseph, take over. I don't want him to jump into you, OK? Come over here with me when it's safe. Woo! Don't let him get it! Don't let him get <laughs> it! Fox on a stick keeps Indiana away from a child's body focusing on a toy and not jumping up at the child. Ah, flying fox! So oh. Now let him be successful. Now good. 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 Isn't this a great way to <laughs> exercise your dog? <laughs> I was very happy that Indy was running around, letting loose all his energy, because at home there's a less likely chance that he'll jump on us and bite us. He'll probably be pooped from this. But I think it would be a great job for you to be able to play with him obviously with your parents' supervision, so that you are an integral part of training this dog. Okay. I plan on utilizing the indoor training facility. I'm gonna interact with Joseph and Shane and the dog and reinforce the positive techniques that Victoria's shown us. They just said to me, I'm so happy. Good. This was successful training, successful family time. I really hope it benefits Indiana for the future. With Indy's aggression and hyperactivity improving, it's now time for the family to take the reins. I'm certainly more optimistic leaving the family than I was when I came here. Thank you so much. What do you they say? are so You're beautiful. Welcome. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Thank you. You worked very hard, and I do think there is hope. I'm feeling very positive, and I feel as long as we work together and commit ourselves, we can continue on the right path. We really like to try and keep them in the family. I'm nervous about Victoria leaving, but, you know, got to put on your big girl underwear and do what you got to do. I'm going to leave you now. Thank you so much for my beautiful flowers. If they continue with the work that we've been doing, <laughs> bye, Joseph. I think Indiana's going to thrive. Hey, that is... you're a good man. Thank you. The whole family now sees what kind of positive influence Indiana could be on us, and we really want them around. Bye. See you Thank later. You. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. She's a nice lady. Silly till the end. Yeah, we're on our own now. Great. Yeah, we'll be all right. On our own. I think you we'll be all right. It's been two weeks since I left Karen and Joe, and the whole family has made a complete turnaround. Off? Stop. <laughs> Off, good boy. Life before Victoria got here was a horror. Um, seriously, I was at the end of my rope. I had no hope at all that Indy could be helped. Touch, good boy. And I feel differently now. I feel we could actually turn it around, that she's left us with some good things that could help us to keep Indy around. Good boy. All right, guys, I'll be right up. I need to put some laundry in the dryer. The baby aid has been a, definitely a positive thing. It seems to work. It really does. Stay, good boy. By creating boundaries for Indiana, the chaos has died down. The children can play, and Karen can do things around the house without disruptions. Joseph, remember? I, I know how to do it, Mom. OK. Mm, sit. Wait. Joseph, when he does interact with Indy, he's wonderful. Wait. OK, Joseph. Good boy, go on. Good boy. Sit. Show him the tree. Sit. He did. Now, good wait. boy. Wait. Wait. OK. That's good. Go. Catch. 
Good boys! To see the boys doing their part is fantastic because this is the kind of relationship and bonding that they should be cultivating with their dog. Hold the stick up like this and swing it higher around so he has to jump and run for it, okay? The family is taking time to play with Indy and everyone is having fun. Good, good, good. There you go. Keep it going, keep it going. Up. When Indy has the appropriate amount of exercise and stimulation, you know, he becomes a different dog. Come on, big boy, let's go. Wait. To everyone's surprise, Joe has kept up with his end of the bargain. Come on. And it shows. Good. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.